Hello and welcome to Eternal Education Network, your ultimate destination for uncovering the wonders of science, history, and the mysteries that shape our world. Today, we're diving into an astonishing new discovery that could rewrite the story of human evolution. Scientists have identified a potential new species in the human family tree, Homo juluensis, also known as the big-headed ancestor. With a brain size larger than Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, this incredible find offers a glimpse into a long-lost chapter of our past. But before we unravel this fascinating tale, take a moment to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update on groundbreaking discoveries like this one. If you love learning about science, history and the mysteries of our universe, give this video a thumbs up and share it with fellow knowledge seekers. Now let's explore the story of Homo juluensis and what it means for our understanding of humanity's origins. Let's dive in. The story of humanity is a mosaic of discovery, an ever-evolving narrative shaped by breakthroughs in science, archaeology, and anthropology. Each new finding weaves a thread into the complex tapestry of our origins. One such revelation has emerged recently, capturing the imagination of scientists and enthusiasts alike a new member of the human family tree named Homo juluensis. Translating to Big Head, this species has sent ripples through the academic world for its defining feature. An astonishing cranial capacity of approximately 1,700 cubic centimeters, significantly larger than both modern humans and Neanderthals. This essay explores the discovery of Homo juluensis, its potential implications, and the fascinating mystery surrounding our shared past. The story of Homo juluensis begins in the remote regions of Eastern Asia, where a team of researchers unearthed a set of fossils that would challenge conventional understanding of human evolution. The fossils, discovered at sites like Shui Ya and Shuchang, represent a unique blend of morphological features, suggesting the existence of a distinct species. These sites, rich in ancient remains, had been studied for years, but it wasn't until recently that their significance was fully understood. The breakthrough came when scientists reconstructed the cranial capacity of the fossils. At 1,700 cubic centimeters, the brain size of Homo juluensis dwarfs that of modern humans, which is around 1,350 cubic centimeters on average, and even Neanderthals, who have about 1,450 cubic centimeters. This extraordinary cranial volume raised intriguing questions about the cognitive abilities of this species. Could Homo juluensis have been more intelligent than modern humans? How did such a large brain influence their behavior, tool-making, and survival strategies? Dr. Wei Zhang, one of the lead researchers, explains, when we looked at the morphology from the Shuaiya fossils and compared it to the Shuchang specimens, we found undeniable similarities. This led us to conclude that these individuals belong to the same group, distinct enough to warrant classification as a new species. The fossils of Homo juluensis reveal a fascinating combination of traits that set them apart from other hominins. The skulls are robust and elongated, with a pronounced brow ridge and larger cranial capacity. The teeth, while similar to those of other archaic humans, exhibit subtle differences in structure and wear patterns, hinting at unique dietary habits. The body structure of Homo juluensis, inferred from limb bones and other skeletal fragments, suggests a physically robust species well adapted to the harsh environments of ancient Asia. Their large brain likely required significant metabolic energy, which may have influenced their diet and hunting practices. Evidence suggests that they were proficient hunters, capable of taking down large prey such as wild horses. Despite the anatomical insights, much remains unknown about the behavior and culture of Homo juluensis. Unlike Neanderthals or early modern humans, there is little direct evidence of symbolic behavior, art, or complex societal structures associated with Homo juluensis. However, the tools found at the Shui Ya and Shuchang sites offer tantalizing glimpses into their capabilities. The tools, primarily made of stone, include scrapers, blades, and pointed implements. These artifacts suggest that Homo juluensis had a firm grasp of tool-making techniques, though their methods appear simpler than those of Neanderthals, or the contemporaneous Homo sapiens. The absence of advanced tools or symbolic artifacts does not necessarily indicate a lack of cognitive sophistication. It may reflect different environmental pressures or cultural developments unique to their context. 
Dr. Wei Zhang elaborates, the tools tell a story of survival. Homo Juluensis were efficient hunters and foragers, adapting their methods to the resources available in their environment. But the absence of clear symbolic artifacts leaves a significant gap in our understanding of their cognitive and cultural complexity. The timeline of Homo Juluensis places them as a species that thrived approximately 300,000 years ago and persisted until about 50,000 years ago. This period coincides with the late Pleistocene, an era marked by dramatic climatic shifts and the coexistence of multiple hominin species. The question of why Homo Juluensis disappeared remains a topic of speculation. Some researchers suggest that competition with Homo sapiens or Neanderthals may have driven them to extinction. Others point to environmental changes, such as the cooling climate of the last ice age, as a potential factor. Dr. Chris Stringer, a prominent paleoanthropologist, offers a competing perspective, arguing that the fossils attributed to Homo juluensis might instead belong to an already recognized species, Homo longi, commonly referred to as Dragon Man. Stringer's team believes that the differences between the fossils might not be enough to warrant a new species classification. This discovery highlights the challenges of paleoanthropology, Stringer remarks. The fossil record is incomplete, and categorizing specimens into distinct species is often a matter of interpretation. What we see as a new species today may, with further evidence, turn out to be a regional variation of an existing one. The controversy surrounding Homo juluensis is emblematic of the complexities in the study of human evolution. In 2021, Chinese researchers proposed the species Homo longi based on a remarkably well-preserved skull found in Harbin. With a large cranial capacity and robust features, Homo longi shares many similarities with Homo juluensis. Some scientists argue that the two species are one and the same, with Homo longi taking precedence as the older, officially recognized name. Dr. Zhang and her colleagues, however, maintain that the Shui Ya and Xu Chang fossils represent a distinct lineage. The morphological differences in the skulls and teeth, coupled with the geographic and temporal distribution of the fossils, support the idea that Homo juluensis is a separate species, Zhang asserts. This debate underscores a broader issue in paleoanthropology, the challenge of defining species boundaries in a continuum of evolutionary change. Fossil classification often relies on subjective judgments about morphological variation, which can be influenced by factors such as geography, diet, and climate. The discovery of Homo juluensis sheds light on the rich and underexplored fossil record of Eastern Asia. Unlike Europe and Africa, where hominin fossils are relatively abundant, Asia has long been overlooked in the study of human evolution. Recent finds, however, reveal that the region was a vibrant crossroads of hominin diversity. From Homo erectus to the Denisovans, Asia has been home to a wide array of species that interacted, interbred, and competed over hundreds of thousands of years. The fossils attributed to Homo juluensis add another layer to this complex history, suggesting that Eastern Asia may have been a hotbed of evolutionary experimentation. One of the most striking aspects of the Chinese fossil record is its variability. Fossils from different sites often exhibit a mix of archaic and modern traits, challenging researchers to untangle their relationships. Dr. Zhang emphasizes, the diversity we see in the Chinese fossil record is extraordinary. It forces us to reconsider traditional models of human evolution, which have often focused on a linear progression from archaic to modern forms. The discovery of Homo juluensis has far-reaching implications for our understanding of human evolution. It challenges the long-held view that larger brain size always correlates with greater intelligence or advanced behavior. Despite their impressive cranial capacity, there is no clear evidence that Homo juluensis developed complex social structures or symbolic culture akin to those of Homo sapiens. Moreover, the existence of Homo juluensis highlights the intricate web of hominin species that coexisted during the late Pleistocene. Far from being a straightforward lineage, human evolution appears to be a mosaic of interactions, with different species overlapping in time and space. The case of Homo juluensis also underscores the importance of preserving and studying the fossil record. Many of the sites in Eastern Asia remain under threat from development and environmental degradation, potentially erasing invaluable evidence of our shared past. 
The story of Homo juluensis is more than just a scientific breakthrough. It is a testament to the boundless curiosity and determination of humanity to uncover its origins. As a species, Homo juluensis embodies both the complexity and mystery of evolution, challenging long-held assumptions and inspiring new lines of inquiry. Though much about them remains unknown, Homo juluensis stands as a reminder that the human family tree is far from complete. Each new discovery, each fossil unearthed, brings us closer to understanding the intricate web of relationships that gave rise to modern humanity. In the quest to illuminate the shadows of our past, Homo juluensis is a shining example of the potential for discovery that lies ahead. Their story is a chapter in the greater narrative of human evolution, a story that is still being written, one remarkable find at a time.